episode 619 of the Terry Wilson 3.com podcast. Today, we're diving into a topic that hits home for anyone trying to reach a big goal, whether it's starting a business, getting healthier, or building stronger relationships. You know the feeling, you're excited to make a change, but as soon as you start, the obstacles seem uh, overwhelming and motivation quickly fades. Why does this happen, and more importantly, how can you push through it? In this episode, we'll explore why resistance often shows up just when we're trying to make progress and what we can do to overcome it. You'll hear practical strategies for handling the mental and physical blocks that can make success feel so far away, and you'll walk away with tools to break through, stay focused, and keep moving forward. If you're ready to turn resistance into resilience, let's dive in. When words are not enough to really show your heart. When you want to send more than just words, send your best, send your blessing, send a gift that speaks to the heart. Flower shop. When feelings need demonstrated right from. Go to Blessed Blooms Flower Shop and Gifts.com to have Amy design a special message, gift, or arrangement for you today. Blessed blooms, Give a gift that speaks to the heart, from flowers to specialized gifts. Blessed blooms, flower shop gifts. Call today, 864-702-3307. That's 864-702-3307. Stop dreading the daily commute. Work from home and earn big. Imagine working for giants like Google, Amazon, or Facebook, all from the comfort of your couch. Our work from home customer support roles let you make your own schedule so you can balance life and work effortlessly. And here's the best part. No cold calling. Earn hourly and commission, giving you unlimited income potential. You're not just joining a job, you're joining a revolution in how we work. Ready to take control of your career? Head over to terrywilsonthrough.com, chat with our friendly bot, and book your interview today. Your dream job is just a click away. You're listening to terrywilsonthrough.com. terrywilsonthrough.com. Inspiring, informative, informative, and entertaining content for the entrepreneur and small business owner. Breaking through resistance, how to overcome obstacles to the path of success. You know, um, I don't care what you want to do, uh, big, small, huge things that you want to accomplish, small things you want to accomplish. Uh, it does seem like anything you want to do, whether it's starting a business, you know, getting better in health, you know, improving relationships, that these things are tough and there are real resistance uh, that are universal to everyone. Uh, when you're trying to step out of the space that you occupy right now, which is typically your comfort zone, and do something different. Resistance really shows up. It's the way your brain is wired. Psychology, but There's a psychology behind it. Uh, so we always want to lean into what's familiar. We always want to lean into what's comfortable. We always want to, so it's that path of least resistance. And when you make change, no matter what it is, big or small, you're going against your current habits, way of thinking, uh, expectations, and you're putting yourself out there to uh, honestly increase the stress on your psychology, your biology, maybe even your theology. You're, in, you're, you're willfully adding stress to a lot of times a soul mind will and emotion and a, and a body that's already under stress and so it's it's really really hard to make changes folks it just is uh you ask questions like do i really want to work this hard why can't this get any easier being easier and so there is a real resistance that everybody that's universal 
And sometimes we beat ourselves up because, you know, we know the changes we need to make, wherever it might be in your life, whatever you're going through, whatever you're doing right now, whatever, if you're, whether you're a small business owner out there, you know you need to make some managerial changes. You need know you need to make some operational changes. Maybe you're a solopreneur and you know, I need to change my habits. Maybe just a person on planet Earth and you know, hey, it wouldn't hurt me to get a little healthier. Maybe there's personal or professional relationships that need to be improved on. I don't know what the goal is. But we all could stand and, you know, it's, it's, it goes without saying, there's always room for improvement. So why don't we improve? Why don't we make those changes? And sometimes we just spend so much time and energy and, and, and wasted, you know, energy beating ourselves up. Man, I know better. I should do this. And, you know, I wished I did this. Or I wished I did that. Or, you know, you know, you just get in this mode of, why can't I do this? Or why can't I do that? Or, you know, it's always this internal negative talk. And so the first thing I want to tell you um, as you're listening to episode 619 here at Terry Wilson 3.com podcast is there are some universal uh, resistance that everyone, no matter how diligent you are, no matter how accomplished you are, no matter if you're just starting out on a journey to improve yourself or you are just an old soul that has been and, you know, self-actualization self actualization journey for a long time that you're constantly trying to go to new and higher levels, no matter where you're at in the journey, everyone, everyone feels pushback and resistance and self-doubt and temptations to quit, temptations to uh, question, was well, it even worth it? So, you have to first and foremost understand that resistance is part of it. Second thing you have to do is understand that there is a science uh, of motivation and willpower. Motivation is limited. Uh, motivation comes in waves. Sometimes I feel motivated. Sometimes I don't, just to be honest with you, which is why motivation, to be honest with you, even though I'm a motivational junkie, even though I try my number one goal that I try to accomplish anytime I get up and make a talk, whether it be to a business group, whether it be to a church group, whether it be on this podcast, I want, my heart is to motivate you, to motivate you and to inspire you to do something more. I love listening to people that are motivational like Zig Ziglar, Les Brown. I, I just, I, I find it nurturing and, and um, comforting to my soul. So I love motivation, but it's unreliable for long-term achievement. Instead, you need to, um, instead of just relying on moments of initial enthusiasm, uh, there has to be something more than motivation. And, and the other thing is the willpower. The willpower is like a muscle that fatigues when overused. And, and this is the thing I've, I've always talked about, and I use this in my uh, situation with my health. The only way I have found, the only sustainable way that I have found to do better with my eating is to not put myself in situations where I have to make a choice and exercise willpower. Because if, if given the choice, I might make that a good decision for breakfast I might make a good decision for lunch, but if I'm given a choice on what to eat, three meals and snacks a day, eventually I'm going to fall. So how do I, how do I avoid that? Well, I put myself in a situation where there is no choice. This is what we've got. This is what we're going to eat. It's already meal prepped. It's already planned. It's there and there's nothing else around for me to do. So avoiding situations where I have to constantly use willpower. And motivation, because if I, there's some days I get up and I'm highly motivated. This is what we're going to do. This is what we're about. I mean, I'm just, I'm the music pumping in my head. The adrenaline's high. The enthusiasm is there. So willpower, motivation, it's not enough. And sometimes the timing's not right. 
for a lot of times, for for most of us, we want to start something and that initial motivation to do something coincides with a, some major life changes, stress, uh, dissatisfaction. So even when motivation is high, the pressure of daily life can add layers of resistance because of the timing. So if we wait on the right timing, if we wait on uh, the motivation and we rely on it and we rely on just sheer willpower, we're setting ourselves up to f- for failure. So there is a science behind and It's not a reflective, a reflection on how high of a character person you are, how high of a principled person you are. And I think this is where a lot of people get into, you know, some real bad negative self-talk. Well, if I just had more willpower, if I was just a more motivated person, if I wasn't such a negative Nancy, if I wasn't such a Debbie Downer, if I was, you know, someone that could actually do something, make a plan and stick with it, I would, you know, and you just beating yourself up. And, And what I'm trying to tell you is there are personality types there are people that are born with just natural higher proclivities towards certain things. But even those people that have just natural ability and strength in those area, when that alone is why and what you're relying on to achieve, you're going to fail. So if you are a negative Nancy, there's hope for you. But if you're a positive Paul, there's a warning for you. Because relying on that alone isn't the solution. So what are the solutions? Having a real strategy that scientifically and theologically, biologically, psychologically is proven to work. That's the only way every, because even though we're all different, there are some universal principles that cut across personality types, temperament types, psychological makeups, and all of that. So number one, I would tell you, start small and focus on consistency. Consistency. Whether I'm motivated or not, this is, I'm going to do this activity. I'm committed to doing it. I'm not even, I don't even care what I see as results. And this is one of the things I had to learn to do, for instance, just going to the gym. You know, when I first started going to the gym, man, After week one, I wanted to see something, and I didn't. After week two, I wanted to see something, and I didn't. After week three, I wanted to see something, I really didn't. But what I found was, if I was only going to do something in that realm based on what I could perceive as immediate payoff, if that was the if that was the the metric I was going by to satisfy this want in me to find some sort of payoff for the investment, I would have quit. So I I figured out real quick, it had to be something more than I had my why in doing that activity had to be more than just seeing an immediate payoff. So what did I do? I had to reshift and reshape and, 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 and reimagine the why. So rather than, seeing immediate results and even worrying about the results it became i do this once a day because it's it's gets me away from the telephone it gets me away from texting it gets me away from social media it allows me to plug in my headphones listen to a podcast learn uh, spend time in meditation and prayer just thinking about my day where i'm at what i want to do spending time with god asking questions doing some deep soul searching and myself, it, I, I, I took it out of the realm that this was only a time for physical benefits, even though that's what I wanted. And I repurposed it and said, it's going to give me that over the long haul. But what I was finding, my immediate payoff was the mental clarity, emotional stability, uh, a feeling of rest a a level of stress that was just immediately going down and because i was able to repurpose it and i started a little i wouldn't say small but i just said i'm going consistently when i do this this is where my mental health is at what i found was one day i woke up and i had abs one day i woke up my shoulders were broader one day i woke up and my chest was was popping out more one day 
I woke up and I noticed that my heart rate and, and my average resting heart rate improved dramatically. One day I woke up and I was 110 pounds lighter. But it started with starting out small and focusing on consistency. And when I said, I have to be consistent with this, then it begged the question, well, how do I stay consistent with this? Because I'm not seeing the results I want. I'm not getting that immediate, that feeling that I got to get a payoff for this. And all I could focus on was the pain it was costing me uh, physically to do something that was uncomfortable. And when I said, if I've got to come up with a reason that I get immediate payoff that's beyond the driving factor here of what got me started thinking, let's do this. And so when I did that, I was like, well, I will say daily, just getting by myself for an hour was nice. Daily, just getting out. Now, some people can work out at a home gym. My wife does that. Here's the other thing. How I did this. We've got a beautiful home gym. We just we got about every machine that the gym that I go to has. But one of the things I also figured out is, hey, Terry, you work from home. You're in your office. You're podcasting. You're Zooming. You're writing. You're blogging. You're by yourself all day. This gives you an opportunity to go out and connect with your community and meet your neighbors and meet business leaders and other people in the community. And all of a sudden, it helped me actually in my business because now – it's not only I'm working out daily. It's not only that I'm getting that psychological payoff. It's not only that years later now I'm seeing physical results, but now I'm seeing business results because I'm connected with a lot of it. It's like the local pub over there for a bunch of high achieving entrepreneurs and business owners. And I was like, dude, so that another, but I had to start off small. I had to start off thinking in starting small, what would be something that would make me more consistent with this activity? And by thinking in that way, it helped me. That same principle, you have to apply to every facet of your life. I'm using health as an example. So many times I see people that are launching a home-based business and they're wanting to do something and they get started and in Week one, they're not, uh, uh, you know, making any money. Week two, they're not making any money. Week three, they started making some money, but it wasn't what they wanted. And they got so motivated, so inspired, so ready to move because they're seeing people that had been doing a particular type of business, whether it be an insurance, whether it be, you know, online marketing, whether it be affiliate marketing, what, you know, whatever type of business they're starting. They see the potential because they see other people doing it. They don't see the same results. And then all of a sudden it's frustrating and they, and, and the numbers are still the numbers. Most people that start a business, they don't stick with it. The turnover rate in new business, especially home-based business, I mean, it's like 90-some-odd percent people quit. Very few people stick with it. So how do I start a home-based business, not see immediate results that I want and what got me there, yet stick with it? Well, let me ask you this. When you start that business inevitably there's going to be training maybe there's some technical training you got to learn how to use some particular software or maybe there is some uh communicational training you got to learn how to communicate and sell and read this script and talk to people and answer objections all this maybe there is some in industry specific uh education like if you win in the insurance understanding the difference between term life universal and, and how they work and why they work for that person maybe it's really whatever there's always something about starting a business, learning that product and learning how to deliver that product that actually is self actualizing and making you better and making you a more proficient, skilled person. Example, if you're going to start a home-based business, you better learn how to communicate. It, Starting a home-based business or starting any business or, or creating any, it doesn't matter what your personality type is. It doesn't matter what your uh, experiences are. You got to learn to communicate. So one of the things, one of the immediate benefits you're going to receive from just starting a business, for instance, is communication. Everybody needs to learn how to communicate better. And what does it mean to learn how to communicate? Learn how other people hear. Well, what does that mean? Learning how other people think. 
empathizing with their judgment functions, their perception functions, all of those deeper psychological things. What is that doing? Making you a better person. So even if you don't stick with this business, even if five years from now you're not in that particular business, the skills and what was put on you as a demand to become better is going to translate over into other things. So one of the things you could use in starting in business, and it's what I've told all my kids and that's what I tell all of my clients is, listen, you might start on a vertical in a particular industry and that's just not for you. That's not your personality type. That's not your, that doesn't, you know, really, it's not very rewarding. It's going to make you a better person. Still milk it for everything it's worth because inevitably there's going to be something in there that maybe you came in, you were highly proficient with communications. You know how to empathize, communicate, talk, how carry on a dialogue, ask probing questions, hear what they're actually saying, not just the words, but the meaning behind it so that you can then answer and alleviate any real objections or fears that they might have. That's going to make you a more persuasive person. You become a more persuasive person. You know what's going to happen? You're going to get in leadership uh, positions. You're going to find yourself... Uh, moving up the corporate ladder or the societal ladder or whatever ladders that you're on. Maybe you're, if you're independent like me, I still can walk into a room, meet a bunch of people, spend some time in that space. And within a few weeks, I'm going to be in some sort of leadership role there. Why? Communication skills, management skills, leadership skills. All of that came from various backgrounds that I was put in that shaped my language skills. But maybe you've got that and then you walked into this and now you're being asked to learn these technical things. You're being asked to to use software systems or electronics or AI or something that's just like blowing your mind. It might not be something that you like, but I'm telling you, you can use it. My point is this. That pain you feel when starting something new, no matter what it is, you have to repurpose that there is immediate payoff and this is the immediate pay and start recognizing the immediate payoff so that it will help drive your consistency. Because if your long-term goal is look like Arnold Schwarzenegger, (laughs) you're going to quit in week one. If that's the only thing you can imagine in your mind that this makes this worth this. If my only goal is to be a millionaire after week one, then I'm going to quit in week one because no one starts a business and lands it in the same week. You don't launch and land a business all in the same week. You just don't. And so there has to be something in between that I'm recognizing and I can perceive, man, this is a huge value to me. I don't, I'm not getting what I came in. I'm not getting the physical physique that I wanted immediately, but I'm getting this. I'm not getting the financial reward that I want, but I'm actually getting this. So you have to repurpose that and break it down, starting out uh, consistent and, and building habits. Habits, 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 habits. Everything, the, the, the strongest thing that you have, the strongest force that you have that will make or break you is habits. Habits, if you can develop a habit, it's going to show me your habits, I'll show you your results. I've been doing TW3 now for uh, since 2008 to so do the math. I think we just celebrated our 16th year, I think it is. And so we're going into our 17th year next year um it is amazing to me because human nature is human nature if i can get people doing a certain activity for about three to three and a half weeks daily doing something they are successful the folks that i cannot get on a regular routine doing certain things and focusing on certain activities that they do daily if I can't get them up to speed in the first month of their business and getting that three and a half week, four week, then the numbers are what they are. Habits is why, you know, my eating, to be honest with you, has gone up and down, especially since the hurricane and everything. We were the grocery stores were out of everything. So I've been eating a lot more carbs and different types of food. It's probably not the best for me uh, lately. And so that's messed my diet up a little bit, but I tell you one thing that's helped I have a habit of every day for an hour a day, I'm going to do some sort of physical activity. It's either going to be physical training, cardio or something, strength training or whatever. I tell you, I would be blown up like a tick the way we've been eating since the hurricane had I not had that habit. So it saved me from that. So it's not like it's totally sending me back into, 
you know, pre-COVID weight era back when, you know, 2019, 2018, when I was over 300 pounds. So that habit has helped. I literally feel anxious if I don't work out that day, you know, in a good way. It's like, oh, oh, I got it, you know, because why? I need to go get my fix. I need to go. It's my stress management. It's my time away. It's my time with God. It's my time with myself. It's my time to connect with the community. It's my time. And when I don't have that, I feel it. I feel it because it's a habit. It's just like getting started. The reason it's so painful is because you're breaking a habit. I know you're tempted to, but do not panic. Terry and the TW3 broadcast. We'll be back right after this extreme profitable timeout for our sponsors. Meet Jim. When Jim first opened his small lawn care business in Akron, Ohio, he was excited but quickly faced a tough reality. His business was new and virtually unknown. And despite all the hard work he put into his services, he struggled to get inquiries. People couldn't find his location, and his online presence was practically non-existent. Jim knew he offered a great service, but without a steady stream of customers, he couldn't sustain the business for long. Jim's biggest frustration was that he had an excellent lawn care service, but no one was finding him. He tried posting on social media, handing out flyers, and even running a few ads, but the calls just weren't coming in. His website wasn't attracting traffic, and when potential customers searched for lawn care in Akron, Jim's business was nowhere to be found. The lack of inquiries was disheartening, and Jim was beginning to worry about the future of his company. Then Jim discovered TW3. After a free consultation, he decided to join their platform and implement their integrated business solutions. In just a few months, the transformation was remarkable. With TW3's AI-powered system, Jim was able to ramp up his capacity far beyond what he originally thought possible. Calls began to flood in, so much so that he could no longer handle all the inquiries himself. TW3's AI system took over booking appointments, answering calls, and even sending out billing automatically. Jim's workload was lightened, and he could focus on delivering the best service possible while the TW3 system handled the administrative tasks. With his newfound ability to manage inquiries efficiently, he no longer worried about missing calls or double booking appointments. His business was thriving, and his reputation began to grow. The real game changer for Jim wasn't just the increase in inquiries, it was how TW3 consolidated everything he needed into one seamless platform. Before TW3, Jim was juggling over 20 different services and software tools, each with its own monthly bill. Between scheduling apps, customer management software, billing systems, and marketing tools, the costs were adding up, and nothing worked well together. With TW3, Jim was able to cancel all those services and run everything through one integrated system, saving him over 80% of what he had been paying before. Even better, TW3 provided training and support to help him get the most out of the system. No more patching things together. Everything was streamlined and built to work as one cohesive unit. Jim's story is just one of many. And you can read more about it in the About section at Terry Wilson. If you're a business owner facing similar challenges, Jim's success can be your story too. To see how TW3 can help you grow your business, go to terrywilson3.com now and book a free one-on-one coaching call today. Just like Jim, you could soon be enjoying a thriving business, streamlined systems, and more inquiries than you can handle, all with the support and technology of TW3. Hey Terry, just wanted to tell you how much I really appreciate all you've done for us. The same is true 
when you are doing good activity. When you stop that good activity, you're going to feel it. So let's reverse the curse of habits. And let's put a habit in the win column for us rather than the losing column. The other thing that people aren't really good at that I have found, and myself included, is being very, very clear and specific on milestones that they want to achieve. If your goal is to make a half a million dollars a year, but you don't have milestones in between that to hit, targets to hit, you're never going to make that half a million. If my goal was to lose, and it was, to lose 110 pounds, then if I had not set the first 20 pounds to be done with in this amount of time, I would have never lost the 110 pounds. Because if I can't lose 20 pounds, I can't lose 110 pounds. If my goal is to repair a relationship in a way that we can be amicable, friendly, and kind when we're together, then how is it that eventually it's going to be where we are close and there's nothing between us anymore? See, there has to be clear, articulable, you know, milestones that I want to achieve. And if the milestone doesn't have a deadline, it's just a wish. It's not a goal. So I have to say, by this time in two months, this is what my weight's going to be or this is what my income is going to be, or this is going to be the status of fill in the blank. You got to do that. And more importantly, it's so true, accountability and environment. You have to have some support. This can be a friend, family member, coach who can help uh, with the accountability, but regular check, check-ins can be very motivating. The other thing is your environment. It plays a huge role. So you need to surround yourself with not only the tools, but people and uh, visual reminders of the goal of what you're trying to achieve. So accountability and environment, it's huge. The other thing is to learn to celebrate when you win. So set up those small goals, achievable goals, and learn to celebrate the wins. You need to recognize it's reinforcing your mindset and your mental health and your your emotional stability that I am winning. I'm winning right now. Here is a track record of me winning. There's no reason why I shouldn't expect to win this next milestone because I won these last one, two, three, ten milestones that I set for myself. That goes, I'm telling you, if you want to overcome the self-doubt the self uh, uh, negative talk, the self, you know, sabotage, then you have to set some things in place, some systems in place of thinking, systematic ways of thinking, because it just don't come natural. Universally, even if you're a positive, the glass is half full person, there is enough negativity in life and in social media and everything around you that is conditioning your mind to doubt. It's conditioning your mind to worry. I don't understand how anybody, and listen, I'm a very typically positive person. I really am. I mean, I'm a, I am a glass half full type of person. I always have been. It's just my natural temperament. I've never struggled with, you know, long-term depression and I've got family members that have a chemical reason and, and psychological reason why they suffer from depression and everything. I, now I've had times of sadness and times of self-doubt and we all do that, but just on a, my, that's not my regular, this is where I'm just set in park mentally. That's just not where, and, and I'm grateful for it because I see the struggle of people that I'm close to that it, it's an intentional day to day purposeful thought out strategical plan that they have to make sure that when they put it in park, they're not parked in this space, but they're parked over here in a more healthy space. I for years took that for granted, just to be honest with you, because it's hard to empathize with something you don't struggle with. Right? So 
My point is this, even though it's naturally for me to be part in just in part without any outside interference, without any outside stimulus that would cause me to think one way or the other. I'm just naturally a glass is half full, positive. It's going to be all right. Easy go lucky type. That's just my personality. Even in that, even in that, I have to learn to celebrate small wins. I have to learn to accept in myself, hey, you did good here. Accept self compliments, accept compliments from others. Have you ever noticed it's it's hard to accept compliments from people from time to time? And if you and I I, I thought about this a been a couple of years ago. I was like, why do I struggle with people that and compliments? I always self defl- I, I deflect. I use self deprecating humor. I try to you know get out of the spot. And the reasons that there there was a part of me that just felt like it was wrong to acknowledge and accept that hey you did something good that it wasn't it wasn't being humble that humility was the highest calling a person should be able to walk in and and what i learned is that's not being humble to accept a win to accept yeah that did good this is i'm i'm proud of myself you're not violating the laws and the principles of humility you're just stating, yeah, and it's actually a negative place to be in mentally by not accepting compliments in yourself and compliments from other people. You have to. How are you going to be with any any integrity, any credibility, going to be able to motivate your team, compliment your team, uh, give your team direction, And they believe it when they see on the inside of you and see every time that something good comes your way, you don't receive it. So you have to model what you want them because you want to reinforce in your team, I would imagine, and whoever you're in charge with, whether it be, you know, your entire company or maybe your manager just in this or maybe it's just your family. I don't know what you're in charge of or what you do, but inevitably you want to. You want to positively reinforce the activities that you know would drive the greatest success for that organization, that team, that person. And so to reinforce good behavior, good activity, good mindsets, good attitudes, to reinforce that means says, hey, I see when you did this, that was great. Thank you, man, that's awesome. You did a great job there. If you want that to sink in with them, you ha- because what do they say? 98% of communication is visual. You know, there used to be a thing where, and I'm on the camera here on the podcast. And if you're not watching the visual side of this, you won't get this, but there was an exercise. I think I saw, um, I think I saw John Maxwell do this where he says, I want to show you why words are important, but modeling the words are more important. He says, now I want everybody in here with your right hand, make the okay signal. And he he was holding it up and he's basically putting his index with his thumb and he's spreading out his three fingers and, you know, it's the old big old OK. He says, so everybody with your right hand, make the OK sign and hold it up. OK, everybody did. He says, now put it down to your your side on your put it place on your thigh. And they did. He said, now put it up and wave it around in a circle. And they did. He says, now I want everybody while they're waving around in a circle. I want you to put that OK sign right there on your forehead. And then what he said forehead but he placed it on his chin and he says i want you guys to notice right now that just about everybody in this room put that okay sign on their chin and not their forehead why because visually that's what i did and that's my point it's important to use clear words what you want to articulate it you know we are a people of word we're word made people we manage teams with words we manage contracts with words But if you want to model what you want people to do, then you have to do. And the point was, I used the correct words. I got you guys 95% to do the right thing. But because I didn't model what I said, all of a sudden, most of you in here modeled what I did and not what I said. And So if you want people to be positively reinforced with your management, with your instructions, With your attaboys, you have to model it yourself and be okay. So celebrate those. Here's my final thoughts. Resistance is a sign of growth. 
not failure. When we encounter it, uh, we're experiencing a transition from what was comfortable to what will make us better. So when you feel resistance in your emotions, in your psyche, in your spiritual life, in your physical life, that's growth. And I would tell you to exercise patience and self-compassion. Every worthwhile goal requires time and setbacks. You need to treat yourself kindly through a journey, because it is a journey, and focus on steady progress. The end goal is what got you in this race. Keep that end goal in mind. But day to day, measure yourself with where you were yesterday. If you've fallen behind, measure yourself from when you started. If you just started and you're still falling behind, measure the fact that at least you're doing something today that you weren't even doing anything yesterday. Because just the fact of you getting started, putting some time, some energy, some effort into doing something better, even if you have absolutely no results from it yet, is still better than where you were and what you were doing previous. Give yourself some slack. Get in there. Stay persistent. Persistence is the key to success every time. I would rather be the most persistent person in a game than the fastest person in the game because speed wears out. It gets tired. Persistence is a force that everything in nature shows you that over time, look what a little water drip can do. Over time, look what just a little wind and rain can do. Over time, it can be something small, It can be something not even hardly, and it doesn't even look like it would give any affect at all. But over time, with persistence, entire boulders and rocks can be chipped away and dug out just by a drip. Be persistent. Know that every day that you are putting activity in achieving your goal is just one more step closer to where you want to be. And as you're on that journey, Find other things that are payoffs, that are returns on your investment other than just the end goal. Yes, the end goal is important. Yes, the end goal is why we started. Yes, the end goal is where we're headed. Yes, the end goal is what it's all about. But in the meantime, there's always things that day to day to day to day, every time I do this, there is another payoff. Put value in that as well. And as you do, you will stay persistent. So we hope you've got a lot out of the content today. Uh, Please take a few minutes to give us a five-star positive review at terrywilson3.com slash review. This helps us promote our content and continue to reach more and more people. Uh, Again, thanks for being part of the TW3 community here at terrywilson3.com. Please like and share our content and we will see you soon. Welcome, fellow leaders, entrepreneurs, and visionaries. Today, I invite you to step into a world where greatness is not just a goal, but a collective reality. Introducing the Elite Mastermind Group by TW3, a sanctuary for those seeking not just success, but exponential growth. It's more than a group. It's a synergy of minds, a convergence of aspirations, and a breeding ground for extraordinary accomplishments. You will learn not only from experts, but from the stories of those beside you fellow trailblazers who weathered storms and conquered obstacles, enriching your own journey. Imagine being surrounded by a league of highly motivated business owners and entrepreneurs, each driven by the same passion for success, propelling each other towards greatness. Embrace the power of networking, the art of learning, and the joy of sharing your value. It's not just about what you gain, but what you contribute. Dare to be exceptional. Dare to be part of the elite. Don't just dream of success. Surround yourself with those who are already living it. Join the Elite Mastermind Group by TW3. Elevate your success. Elevate your life. Hi, 
unlock the power within you, discover the untapped potential waiting to be unleashed. You Are Worth More isn't just a book, it's a transformative guide to understanding your unique value in today's ever-evolving marketplace. Visit youareworthmorebook.com and claim your free copy. Within these pages, you'll unravel the secrets to identify your distinct strengths, refine your skills, and ignite the passion to pursue your true worth. Life isn't just about survival, it's about thriving. This book is your roadmap to not only surviving, but excelling in a world that demands your best. It's about recognizing your potential, developing your talents, and finding the inspiration to chase after what truly matters to you. Let You Are Worth More be your companion on this journey. It's not just a book, it's a catalyst for change. Empower yourself, elevate your skills, and embrace the opportunities that await. Visit youareworthmorebook.com today and embark on the path to realizing your full potential. Your worth is far more than you might imagine. Claim your free copy now and begin your transformation.